In 1659, the General Court of Massachusetts made it illegal to celebrate Christmas. If December 25th rolled around and you tried to put on a feast or even take the day off, you'd be out five shillings. To fully understand why this happened, we need to look at the history of Christmas in the colonies. New England in the 1600s was a land of Puritan pilgrims. Cast out by Anglican England for their beliefs, the pilgrims had journeyed across the Atlantic to build their own world, a world that rejected most of the ceremonies and holidays kept by English society. Like many people today, early New Englanders feared that the festivities of Christmas distracted from what was really important. But Puritans took it a step further. They weren't interested in celebrating Jesus' birthday at all. Even before the 1659 ban, New Englanders strongly discouraged Christmas celebrations. Historian Stephen Nissenbaum writes that, In New England, for the first two centuries of white settlement, most people did not celebrate Christmas. We see this in almanacs from colonial New England, which listed minute details about every day of the year, but made a point to not acknowledge Christmas. The Puritans pointed out that the Bible never commanded anyone to celebrate Christ's birthday. They also argued that Christmas was an inherently pagan holiday, that Pope Julius only selected the 25th of December in order to appropriate Roman pagan festivals held around the same time. In reality, historians debate why or when Christians started to celebrate Christmas on December 25th. There were likely a number of factors at play. Some scholars do believe that Christians chose a day close to pagan holidays to make it more palatable to Roman society. But early Christians also had reasons to believe Jesus was born on the 25th. For instance, St. Augustine argued that Christ chose to be born on the winter solstice because of the symbolic nature of sunlight increasing after that day. In any case, perhaps the biggest reason Puritans were so anti-Christmas was that Christmas had been associated with debauchery since the Middle Ages. Christmas was not family-friendly. Celebrators consumed copious amounts of alcohol, instigated riots in the street, and inverted social norms. Even pro-Christmas Anglicans agreed that the season was linked to sinfulness. Bishop Hugh Latimer wrote that, men dishonor Christ more in the 12 days of Christmas than in all 12 months besides. Clerics complain that people use the Christmas season as an excuse to drink alcohol all day and gorge themselves on food. They also decried the social role reversals present in contemporary Christmas traditions. One of these traditions was called mumming. Men would dress like women and vice versa and visit neighbors' houses. However, the more dangerous form of role reversal was Christmas caroling, or whistling, in which the poor no longer served the wealthy. Bands of young men sang carols in the streets and entered the homes of rich neighbors demanding to be served food and drink. Oftentimes there was an implicit threat of violence or ill will if the wealthy host didn't oblige. That's actually the reason why We Wish You a Merry Christmas, which has roots in 16th century England, seems so aggressive in its request for figgy pudding. With or without Christmas, winter was a time of year that already encouraged rowdiness. English society was based around agriculture. The end of the fall harvest meant newly fermented beer and wine and fresh meat. And once snow covered the fields, settlers found themselves with a lot of free time to consume that alcohol and food. In short, Puritans felt no need to add Christmas traditions to the drunkenness and gluttony of December and January. But slowly, attitudes towards Christmas were beginning to warm. The 1659 Massachusetts Bay Colony ban on Christmas was repealed in 1681, under pressure from the British Crown. Soon, British Christmas sermons and songs were being reprinted in Boston. And by the late 1700s, most of colonial society recognized Christmas as a sacred day. Only the old Calvinists still maintained the Puritan disdain for Christmas. These trends continued after the U.S. won independence in 1776, as several Christian denominations pushed for shops and schools to close on Christmas Day. But in the end, we can partially thank commercialization for sustaining the domestic brand of Christmas we have today. American shopkeepers saw the opportunity to sell toys and advertise them heavily. Poems like Twas the Night Before Christmas in 1822 painted the modern image of Santa Claus. Couple these trends with a less agricultural, industrializing society, and the end result was a new kind of Christmas. A celebration less about boisterous post-harvest partying 
and more about spending a relaxing day with your family. So thanks for checking out this video of History Dose. If you like what you saw, make sure to like the video, maybe even subscribe, or consider donating to our Patreon account.